It wouldn't be The Simpsons without the Flanders, right? In today's tutorial, I'll be building an HO scale version of Ned Flanders' house, so Homer can have his neighbor Rooney to keep him company. The difference for this build will be that it will be mainly focused on building Ned's house using a laser cutter with a much smaller focus on 3D printing. Again, I start in my favorite 3D modeling program, Tinkercad. This program, as you'll see, is also great for creating SVG files that can be laser cut. And it's very useful being able to see the model in its three-dimensional shape before layering it all flat and laser cutting. Using various images from the cartoon help enable me to build the house as accurately as I can. To make assembly easier, I create small tabs on each corner. This makes it much easier to align the parts and ensure they go together as intended. It's also worth noting that the laser will remove a small amount of material. So to account for that, I leave a little bit of overlap between the parts. This will ensure there is a nice snug fit when gluing the two sides together. To export an SVG file in Tinkercad, you want the part to intersect the floor plane. Then with the part you want selected, you can click export and then export as an SVG. The entire project will be available to download on my website and the Tinkercad project file will be publicly available as well so you can make changes as needed to suit your method of construction. I'll be using 1mm clear acrylic for this project. I first prepare the acrylic by removing the protective sheet and then giving it a light sanding across the front and back. This will 1. make sure it's easy to see using the laser cutting camera and 2. it will make painting much easier. Paint doesn't tend to adhere well to smooth plastic. The laser for this project is the BMO 30W CO2 laser. With the Beam Studio app open, I can take an image of the work surface. I only need to see the two edges knowing that the middle is entirely covered by the 1mm acrylic. Now each SVG file can be opened and positioned, making the most of the acrylic sheet. With all the parts aligned, I set the power as needed and proceed to start the cut. You can see how easily the laser does cutting through acrylic. It's my material of choice for laser cutting. It doesn't warp over time either, compared to a lot of wood and MDF materials, especially considering I live in a very humid part of Australia. There may be very slight raised edges around the cut. It's usually not a problem, however it's very easy to remove with a quick pass using some sandpaper. As for glue, a good acrylic cement like Weld On 3 works really well. However, I recently saw a modeler using 3D resin as a glue to hold parts of a 3D print together. That gave me the idea to try that on laser cut acrylic models. All you need is some 3D printer resin, a UV torch and gloves. I also wrap my torch in a plastic bag to help avoid getting resin on it. I was pleasantly surprised. Not that it works, I suspected it would, but at how well it worked. I didn't expect it to do such an amazing job. The process goes so fast. Compared to using something like epoxy or even superglue, the construction of this model just flew by. And it was even better because resin goes on wet, then you can take your time getting the part just right in terms of position and angle, then when you're ready, hit it with the UV light for about a second and it's set in position and won't move on you. I give it about 5 seconds generally, just to ensure the resin sets really well. I think it's important that the acrylic surface is sanded. With a perfectly smooth surface, I don't think the resin would stick quite as well. You can see that it's quite strong. Of course I could break it, but with a little bit of force it still holds up really well. Not only does it work well at gluing and holding parts together, but it also works really well as a filler. It's probably the best filler for acrylic parts I've ever used. Simply adding a few drops to the area you want to fill and then curing it with the torch is enough to fill most small gaps. For larger gaps you can add a drop, cure it, and then continue adding drops and curing each layer until the gap has been filled. This process gets repeated right across the model filling in any unwanted gaps.
Once done, I give the model a final cure using the curing chamber for about 10 minutes just to make sure all of the resin is cured properly. You could also leave it out in the sun if you don't have a curing chamber. Once fully cured, the excess is sanded away. For easy to reach areas, it's easy to use a large flat sanding surface. This will ensure that it's all evenly sanded flat. For other areas, it might be necessary to use a sanding stick or something similar. The chimney is a bit unique. I use four one mm flat sections and stack them together with some resin between each layer. Then once pressed together, I have a small amount of one mm alignment holes in each piece so a piece of styrene can be pushed through. This helps ensure each section of the chimney is perfectly aligned and it is glued together using the resin. Once glued, the excess styrene is removed and the process of sanding and filling is done to get a nice smooth surface. Now it's ready for some paint. I use primer filler for the undercoat, applying it in multiple thin layers. The surface is very lightly sanded afterwards with 600 grit sandpaper. This leaves an almost imperfection free surface layer. The joining tabs are basically invisible. Now the garage is attached the same way as the rest of the model is assembled. There was quite a large gap along one edge, however using the resin gap filling method, once sanded and painted the gaps virtually disappear. All the other details like doors and windows are also laser cut. Before painting they get a rinse in some soapy water to remove any dust and fingerprints. For detail parts I like to use Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. It's a good lightweight primer that doesn't fill in and remove detail if applied sparingly. For colour I'm using purples, browns and reds. The colours in the cartoon are quite pastel looking so to get a pastel finish I add some white to the colours I'm using. The end result is a nice soft colour that is pretty close match to the colours you see on the TV show. It's not entirely necessary, but I also paint the roof. This will be getting covered in paper later, but just in case the base colour shows through the paper a little bit, I paint it purple as well. The house colour is a mixture of cork and white. It's a darker shade compared to the Simpsons house. It doesn't look much different from the base coat at the moment, but once dry and when the two houses are side by side, it's a pretty close representation of what it should look like. Lastly, the painted parts are sealed with Tamiya Flat Clear to protect them from scratches and other damage. The windows were quite a tight fit, so they needed a little bit of sanding along the edges to remove built up paint so they would fit in the window openings nice and snug. The interiors, just like the Simpsons house, are printed on paper and the window glazing is a very thin acetate sheet, which was a bit dirty so before attaching them to the window interiors, I gave it a wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol. To stick this to the window interiors, I spray it with some spray adhesive. Now it's gently lowered and pressed onto the sheet of paper with the interiors printed on them. Pressing quite firmly to force out any bubbles and make sure the glue bonds really well with the paper. Now for the frames. The back of each frame has a thin bead of liquid PSA applied. It only needs to be a very small amount applied to the back of each window frame. Once this dries clear, it will remain very tacky. Now it's ready to be pressed onto the acetate sheet. I designed it with a little bit of overhang so it doesn't have to fit perfectly. Once aligned, pressing down firmly ensures the liquid PSA gets a good hold. Next, it's just a matter of cutting them out. I deliberately cut them out with a small amount of overhang protruding past the window frame. This will help when gluing them in place. Some more PSA is applied in each corner of the window frame on the little area of overhang. When they are pressed into position, the overhanging areas press up against the inside of the house. That way it won't press through too far and all the windows will sit perfectly against the inside wall. 
Other details like the window shutters and window sills are added now as well. Some brick detail is added to the chimney using the laser cutter. This could of course have been done initially when the chimney was laser cut the first time, but it also works doing it now as well. The roof, like the window interiors, is also printed on paper. I use Photoshop to get the colour and size just right so that the roof will fit with a small amount of overhang. Detail is also drawn to roughly match what you see in the cartoon. Once printed, it's cut out. Some Super 77 spray adhesive is used on the back. Then aligning the top edge as best I can, I gently press it down. Starting from the top and gradually working down to the bottom. This helps prevent bubbles. Excess paper is trimmed away using a sharp hobby knife. The white edges of the paper are coloured in with some purple texture, just so they aren't so obvious. Now we can attach the chimney. I used a machinist block to ensure the chimney was straight, unlike the 3D printed house where I accidentally broke the chimney while trying to straighten it as the epoxy was hardening. That's pretty much it for laser cutting and the house construction. There are some additional 3D printed details that will be added. The doorway awning is one such detail, as well as the security lights and also the aerial on the roof. Now for the rest of the diorama. I'm not going to spend too much time talking through this process. It's almost identical to how the Simpsons house diorama was built. I will talk through some of the changes though, and some mistakes like using the wrong thickness plywood, but at least it was an easy fix. Importantly on this module, I needed the dimensions to line up. So carefully measuring areas like the footpath and the road, so they match up when the two dioramas are pressed together. Here is a montage of the process. For a detailed description, be sure to check out the previous video where I build the Simpsons house. I spend a bit more time talking about the specific process and materials I use in that video. Something I didn't show last time was bending the grass fibers up along the edge. You want to do this before the glue dries. For the tall trees beside Ned's house, I'm using sea foam and natural plant material. I picked out one that was straight and roughly the right height. To get the shape, I trimmed down with some scissors. Adding the foliage is pretty similar to how most of the other trees are made. Spray adhesive, followed by some coarse turf foam, possibly a couple of layers, and then once done it gets a coat of Tamiya Flat Clear to help hold it together and remove the tackiness from the spray adhesive. The fence is laser cut in the same acrylic that was used for the main house. There are tabs along the top and bottom to help keep the palings together and spaced evenly. The runners are 0.5mm thick styrene and super glued to the back. Once the glue is set, the tabs along the top and bottom can be cut away. Some sanding may be needed to remove this small amount of excess tab. Now it's ready for some brown paint. The hedge along the back of Ned's yard is made with a strip of cork floor tile. It's very similar to the tree that was made earlier. Spray adhesive followed up with a couple of layers of coarse foam as well as a sprinkling of fine turf burnt grass from Woodland Scenics for a bit of colour and finally a liberal coat of Tamiya Flat Clear. To add the hedge at the back, I needed to scrape away a much thicker patch of grass. I do this so the hedge is pressed down and embedded into the grass. The excess cork is pretty easy to cut away. Then the hedge can be glued down permanently using some tacky glue. Here is one of the mistakes I made. I accidentally used 7mm plywood instead of 9mm plywood for the base. Luckily this was an easy fix. Simply adding some risers using styrene to the base of the Flanders module, I was able to raise the height of the module to match the Simpsons one. Now when the modules are pressed together, the height matches much closer. 
Last time I painted the edges black right at the end, but they can really be done at any point. It's a bit easier to do it before the house has been glued onto the diorama. Ned has some garden edging along the front of the footpath. I'm just using some florist wire wrapped around the end of my hobby knife to create the circles. Then I can cut the circles in half and get some consistent semicircles. The shape is a little off so I pinch them together just a bit to get a nice shape that looks similar to the cartoon. Then they are simply glued down along the edge of the footpath. These little pot plants look really cute. And the pot plants along the front have some foliage added as well. Once the trees are added, it's almost done. The final touch is Ned, Todd and Rod. Now we have a completed diorama. A perfect addition to set up right next door to the Simpsons. Homer will be so happy. This was a very fun build to make. Don't forget to check out my website to download all the files so you too can have fun building this model of the Flanders house. Also the original Tinkercad file will be made available if you need to make any adjustments to suit your specific laser cutter or if you want to try 3D printing the model. Looking forward to seeing you at the next video. Cheers and thanks for watching.